Hi, Terry Shanefelt from UAB School of Medicine. In this video, I want to discuss how we assess the reliability of a physical exam maneuver. The principles here could also apply to any other diagnostic test, though. When we think about reliability, we think about accuracy and precision. So what is accuracy? Accuracy is how close our measurement is to the real value or the actual value of that thing that we're measuring. So for example, maybe we have an arterial line into a patient that's given us the gold standard measurement of blood pressure and we put a blood pressure cuff on the patient's arm and we see how close it is to that actual value of the arterial line our blood pressure cuff measurement is. That would give us a sense of accuracy of the blood pressure cuff. Well, what about precision? Precision deals with if multiple people measure the same thing and the system doesn't change, how closely grouped will their measurements be? So for example, if I have my inpatient medical team, myself, my resident, my interns, all measure blood pressure in that patient who had the arterial line and I had them all do the blood pressure measure using a blood pressure cuff, Hopefully we'd all be pretty clumped together. Our measurements would be very similar between myself, the residents, and the interns and students. Now one way we might try to express this um, reliability is through simple agreement. And simple agreement is just a proportion of total observations in which the measures agree about the findings. And if we look at this two by two table, there are two places we can agree, box A and box D. And all the, in the other two boxes, we disagree. So simple agreement is just a percentage of total agreement out of all the measurements. So we'd add up A and D, and we'd then add up the entire 2 by 2 table, and that would give us our percentage of simple agreement. Now let's look at this graphically. So bullseyes are a great way to think about accuracy and precision. If you're accurate, you hit the center of the um, target. You hit the bullseye. If you're precise, all your measurements are very clumped together. So this first box shows something that is both accurate and precise. It hits the bullseye and the targets are all clumped together. Down here, this is accurate because we've hit the bullseye, but the measurements are all over the place, so it's not very precise. Up here, we're very precise because we have all our measurements clumped together, but not a single one of them hits the bullseye, so we're not accurate. And down at the bottom right, we're neither accurate nor precise. Our measurements are spread out, and none of them hits the bullseye. Now, thinking back to simple agreement, that percentage of times that multiple um, clinicians agree on a finding, there's a problem with it. I want you to think about that for a second. What is the problem with just simple agreement? And to demonstrate this, let's say I have either a pink ball or a red ball that I'm holding behind my back. And I want you to guess whether it's pink or red. Now let's say I had a blue ball. Did you guess blue? Well, if I had a bunch of people in the room and I asked them to guess, there are going to be several that guess blue. And it's not because they had any skill or knowledge. It's totally a guess that they got the blue. And that's the problem with simple agreement. You can totally guess and agree with someone. It doesn't require any skill, any knowledge of actually knowing the real value. It's purely a guess. So one of the ways we can try to get around that issue of just dumb luck of guessing and agreeing with someone is through something called the Kappa statistic. And you can think about the Kappa statistic as just chance corrected agreement. What it tries to do is to remove agreement that would have occurred by chance and just give you some sense of the agreement that is above and beyond chance. And this is the formula for, the, for Kappa, it's observed agreement minus expected agreement divided by 1 minus expected agreement. So it's trying to remove out this expected agreement because there is some level of expected agreement that's just due to chance alone. And this table or figure tries to give you a sense of how to interpret kappas. Really I like my kappas to be 1. It'd be great if there was perfect agreement that was never due to chance. And I really sort of use a cutoff somewhere around 0.8 as being important agreement. Less than that, I'm worried about too much just guesswork and chance. So what I want you to do is think about a lung finding that you think for sure if you had multiple students or multiple faculty that they'd all agree is present or absent. Also think about a cardiac finding in the same way. Surely there's got to be something that we're all very good at detecting and agreeing on. Well, I'm going to show you tables from McGee's book on um, evidence-based physical diagnosis. And look at some of the things over here of lung findings. 
look at these kappas. They're not very good. We have lots of problems as, as clinicians agreeing on whether something is present or not. Here's some cardiac findings over here. Which one did you pick? Is it on the list? And I expect things like an S3 for people having difficulty, but other things you would think that people could agree on and agree something is there. But again, fairly low kappas for a lot of things. So I hope this shows you that um, when you read papers um, about physical exam maneuvers, they're going to report kappas to you. Um, hopefully this gives you some sense of how reproducible that maneuver is. Um, hopefully the sense of accuracy and precision will also help you understand um, the usefulness of physical exam maneuvers and help you interpret, the, interpret these papers as you read them.